Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. And welcome back to another session of our Sunrise Manna. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your presence. I pray that you are holding on to faith and holding on to hope during these challenging times. Well, today's lesson will be taken from 2 Maccabees, chapter 1. Sister B.R. shared this wonderful prayer with me in our last video, and I thought this is a wonderful prayer to share and just to talk about what it says and also just to chat about some other things before we delve into our prayer. You know, I want to talk a moment about opposition. None of us likes it. We don't like to be opposed. And sometimes it seems that the opposition comes when you're trying your best to do right. You're trying your best to do what the Most High has called you to do or what you feel he wants you to do, whether it be on a job or in a relationship or in a ministry or in a friendship or even in your parenting. There are times when it feels as if you're being opposed when you're doing what's right. And this, according to scripture, is the persecution that often comes for the sake of righteousness. Now, sometimes we're opposed and sometimes we're challenged when we're doing wrong. And the Most High allows that to come too for our edification so that we might learn where we're going wrong and then turn back into the right path. But regardless of when it comes and why it comes, it can be painful sometimes, especially when it comes at the hands of those that you care about, whether it be a spouse or a child or a good friend or an ex-good friend. I think that it's important for us to evaluate our motives during this time when we're opposed, when we feel people coming against us or when we feel challenged. It's important to take that hurt and that pain to the Most High and say, Father, show me me. In this situation, where have I gone wrong? Where have I gone astray? What have I done that may be uh, against what you would have me to do? In what way have I sinned against you? Or have I? Or am I on the right path? Am I doing the things that you want me to do? Am I pleasing in your sight? And so if you get the Most High to respond to your hurt and your pain and allow you and encourage you with his acknowledgement that you're doing what he wants you to do, it helps. It helps you to continue to go forward. It helps you to continue to move forward because no one can curse with the Most High, his Baruch, his blessed. And that's a lesson for us today. We are in the land of captivity, in the land of misery and slavery, and we want out. We want to go home. We want to go home. And so it's incumbent upon us to reach out to the Most High on a daily basis and let Him know how we're feeling and reach out to Him in repentance and ask Him to deliver us from our captivity, but also to ask Him to avenge us it is a part of our culture. Vengeance is a part of our culture. And this is what I mean by that. In Torah, it teaches when someone is killed of a family, there has to be assigned a kinsman avenger. And that kinsman avenger is then tasked with the responsibility of avenging that family member's death. Now, the person who committed the crime can run to a city of refuge and there were many cities of refuge in our nation. And these places were specifically designed by the Father because he is so merciful for people who have committed crimes in the heat of passion or anger, perhaps it was an accident, okay? So the person goes to these cities of refuge and then the high priest or the judge comes. And if it's determined that the crime was committed as an accident, he is allowed to live in the city of refuge as a form of protection for him against the kinsman avenger. But if it's been determined that he's guilty of murder or guilty of the crime, then he is to be released. And then the kinsman avenger is to take out vengeance. That is his role. Well, Messiah is not only our kinsman 
redeemer. He's also our kinsman avenger, and he will avenge what happens to us, what happens now and what happened in the past. Okay, because once we come to a place of repentance before him, everything that we've done is covered under the blood of the lamb. And those things that were done to us that the Most High gave no permission to do must be judged. And the Most High will recompense through his son. And we're grateful for that. So as we talk about the the whole aspect of being opposed by the people that we care about, it also leads us to the question of, what of the question of hate? I addressed that question in one of my recent uh, prayers, and I was reading from Psalm 139, and David said, don't I hate those who hate you? Don't I hate those who oppose you, O Yahuwah? I hate them with perfect hatred, he says. And in that video, I indicated that hate diminishes me. Hate diminishes us all because it's difficult for us to hate in a way that is perfect before the most High. meaning that we're able to have these negative feelings and then when the person repents, immediately turn and then bring them in or welcome them in and offer them our forgiveness. It's, it's a challenge for us because we tend to want to hold on to those things. You know, it's from our own humanity. We tend to want to hold on to the things that happened to us that hurt us. It's certainly understandable. For me personally, it's still a challenge for me. So I hold in my heart negative feelings, or I could say feelings of hatred against the actions. I try to not assign them to the person, but against the actions and against the wicked people who do wicked things, what I want for them is I want the judgment of the Most High to fall upon their heads. Just like the judgment of the Most High fell upon our heads. Why would I want any less for them? When we do wrong, we're corrected of the Most High. That's what he does. And so if he corrects me or he corrects you, his children, then he will correct our enemies. And that is not hatred. Wanting the Most High to recompense and to avenge our nation is not hatred. It is called justice. And I desire justice for Jacob, justice for Jacob, justice for Yasharal. And so I've entered this phase in my life now where I recognize that the things that the Most High brings through me, they are just one layer. And then maybe tomorrow or the next day, he'll peel back another layer and then another layer. And so he's constantly causing us to see the scripture in new ways. I tell you what I see in the scriptures. And it's up to you to go to the Most High and determine whether or not he'll show you the same thing. Okay? At no point are you required to receive what the Most High gives you either directly or through another person. You're not required. We all have the Ruach HaKodesh who is our teacher, absolutely. And we know that. We all know that. But the Most High teaches His people through His servants until we all. Until we all. We're waiting for that period where we that we will get to. Where until we all. Until we all come to the full measure where Mashiach is fully formed in us, where we stand and he stands full. He's not an infant in us. He's not a toddler in us. He's not a teenager in us. He's a full grown man in us because we have created space for him to increase as we decrease. And that is what we must get to. So until we get to that place, we need teachers, we need prophets, we need apostles, we need evangelists, we need pastors or shepherds. We need those fivefold gifts until we all, until we all come to the full maturity in Messiah. And until that time comes, we are obligated to hear what the Most High has to say through the teachers that he has brought forward. Or you cannot listen. The choice is yours. It always has been. It always has been. So, as I was saying about hatred, hatred is something that is not a thing that I desire to focus on. Right now, at this stage in my life, my focus is justice. 
I'm asking for the Most High to have mercy upon the nation that he's been knowing from the beginning. I'm asking the Most High to have mercy upon the people who have sinned against him for a long time now. But we, the remnant of our ancestors, we, we're coming to a realization of how we did wrong. And we want to be forgiven and we want to be received and we want to come to a place of repentance before the Most High. We need and desire His mercy to be shown to us. We desire His justice and we also desire for Him to pour out His vengeance upon our enemies. Yes, we're asking Him to do that and that is not hatred. It's not. Those souls in the book of Revelation who are under the altar crying out for vengeance, they're not sinful. And neither are we who are alive and remain waiting to be caught up to meet Messiah in the air. It is not sinful, nor wrong, nor hateful for us to call forth the judgment of the Most High upon our enemies. We're going to read 2 Maccabees and then we're going to pray because I really need this prayer session today. I need it and I'm so grateful that the Most High allows me to do these videos and just to be his mouthpiece and to do what he wants me to do. That's my only desire, to do his will. So we'll begin reading in 2 Maccabees chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. And it reads, The brethren, the Yehudim that be at Jerusalem, and in the land of Yehuda or Judea, wish unto the brethren the Yahudim, the Jews, that are throughout Egypt, health and peace. Shalom. Allah be gracious unto you, and remember his covenant that he made with Abraham, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his faithful servants, and give you all in heart to serve him and to do his will with a good courage and a willing mind and open your hearts in his Torah and commandments and send you peace, shalom. And hear your prayers and be at one with you and never forsake you in time of trouble. Hallelujah, yes, Father, hear our prayers and be one with us and never forsake us in the time of trouble. And now we be here praying for you. Oh, hallelujah, thank you. May we pray for one another. Verse 7, what time as Demetrius reigned in the hundred threescore and ninth year, we, the Yahudim, wrote unto you in the extremity of trouble that came upon us in those years. From that time, from the time that Jason and his company revolted from the set-apart land and kingdom and burned the porch and shed innocent blood. Then we prayed unto Yahuwah and were heard. We offered also sacrifices of fine flour and lighted the lamps and set forth the loaves. And now see that ye keep the feast of tabernacles in the month of Kaslu. In the hundred four score and eighth year, the people that were at Jerusalem, Jerusalem and in Judea and the council and Judas sent greeting and health unto Aristobulus, King Ptolemaeus' master, whom was of the stock of the anointed priests, and to the Jews, or Yahudim, that were in Egypt. And so much as Alua hath delivered us from great perils, we thank him highly as having been in battle against a king. For he cast them out that fought within the set-apart city. For when the leader was come into Persia, and the army with him that seemed invincible, they were slain in the temple of Nania by the deceit of Nania's priests. For Antiochus, as though he would marry her, came into the place and his friends that were with him to receive money in the name of a dowry, which when the priests of Nania had set forth, he was entered with a small company into the compass of the temple. They shut the temple as soon as Antiochus was come in. And opening a privy door of the roof, they threw stones like thunderbolts and struck down the captain, hewed them in pieces and smote off their heads and cast them to those that were without. 
Blessed be Yahuwah in all things, who hath delivered up the ungodly. Therefore, whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple upon the fifth and twentieth day of the month of Kaslu, we thought it necessary to certify you therefore that ye might also keep it as the feast of tabernacles and of the fire, which was given us when Nemeus offered sacrifice after that he had builded the temple and the altar. For when our fathers were led into Persia, the priests that were then devout took the fire of the altar privily and hid it in a hollow place in a pit without water where they kept it sure so that the place was unknown to all men so he's saying here that before they were led into he calls it persia but really they were being led into babylon and the territory became persian territory when persia came and defeated the babylonians so when they were led into babylon their fathers who were the the levites they took fire from the sacred altar that the most high ignited the most high ignited this altar and they were to keep this fire burning before the most high so they took precious fire from the altar and they hid it in a hollow place in a pit that had no water in it okay to keep the fire from the altar safe verse 20 now after many years when it pleased alua nemeus being sent from the king of Persia, did send the posterity of those priests that had hid it to the fire. But when they told us, they found no fire, but thick water. So after a period of time in Persia, or in Babylon that has now become Persian territory, the priests came to find the fire that had been hidden in this hollow place. And all they found in it was thick water. When they placed the fire in the t- in the hollow there was no water in it but after many years there's now thick water and no fire verse 21 then commanded he them to draw it up and to bring it and when the sacrifices were laid on nemeus commanded the priest to sprinkle the wood and the things laid upon it with the water so remember the thing that held the fire now has water so nemeus is saying sprinkle the sacrifice with this water and when this was done verse 22 and the time came that the sun shone which afore was hid in the cloud there was a great fire kindled so that every man marveled so this water which originally was supposed to be the fire from the temple from the tabernacle was now kindled water kindled into fire it reminds me of the miracle Uh, at the slaughter under Elijah. Hallelujah. And the priest made a prayer whilst the sacrifice was consuming. I say both the priest and all the rest, Jonathan beginning and the rest answering thereunto as Nemeus did. And the prayer was after this manner. O Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Alua, creator of all things, who art fearful and strong and righteous and merciful and the only and gracious king the only giver of all things, the only just, almighty and everlasting, thou that deliverest Yasharal from all trouble. And didst choose the fathers and sanctify them. Receive the sacrifice for thy whole people, Yasharal, and preserve thine own portion and sanctify it. Gather those together that are scattered from us. Deliver them that serve among the heathen Look upon them that are despised and abhorred, and let the heathen know that thou art Alua. Hallelujah. This is the sincere prayer of my heart that the people in this world would once again know that there is an Alua, that he is still on the throne. They've forgotten. And the Most High gained himself renown and fame when he used Pharaoh, he worked through Pharaoh to show himself in the world. And the world has forgotten him. They've forgotten his power. They've forgotten his people. They've forgotten he is an Elohim. He is an Elua of justice. They've forgotten. And my prayer before the Most High is that he would make the people to remember him. That he would make the people to remember his power and his majesty and his splendor. That he would make his face known again amongst the heathen. 
Verse 28. Punish them that oppress us, and with pride do us wrong. Here we go. This is a prayer from our ancestor in the book of Maccabees. And what is he calling for? Punishment on our enemies. It is not hateful or wrong to ask the Most High to punish your enemies. It is not. It is not. It is scriptural. I'll read that again. Punish them that oppress us, and with pride do us wrong. Plant thy people again in thy set-apart place, as Moses has spoken. And the priest sung psalms of thanksgiving. Now when the sacrifice was consumed, Nemeas commanded the water that was left to be poured on the great stones. When this was done, there was kindled a flame. So this water, though it's water, is creating a flame. The Most High is so mighty and so powerful. But it was consumed by the light that shineth from the altar. So when this matter was known, it was told the king of Persia that in the place where the priests that were led away had hid the fire, there appeared water, and that Nemeus had purified the sacrifices therewith. Then the king, enclosing the place, made it set apart after he had tried the matter. And the king took many gifts and bestowed thereof on those whom he would gratify. And Nemeus called this thing Naphthar, which is as much as to say a cleansing. But many men call it Nephi. Hallelujah. May the Most High Baruch bless the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the wisdom contained within these passages. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you confound the mighty. You confound the wise. There's no one like you, O oh, Father. There's no one like you. Hallelujah. The Most High took water, water, and made fire from it. He takes those things that look like it's one thing. And then he who made the laws of nature bends the laws of nature to serve his own purposes. He is mighty. He is powerful. He is great. He is awesome. He is our father. And we are blessed to be in relationship with him. Brothers and sisters, the king of all time is our father. He calls us his own. He writes us on the palm of his hands. We are the apple of his eye. He loves us. He chose us. How can we not in respond choose him? May we pour out our whole hearts and our full measure of devotion unto the Father. He alone is worthy. May we obey Yahusha, our master and our king. May we ask the Father to send him back to receive what belongs to him, the children that Yahuwah hath given him. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your miracles and your mighty acts and your mighty works. And Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To forgive us. Help us. We need you, Father, in this hour. We need you every hour. We're asking you, Father, to forgive us, to have mercy upon us, and to grant justice for Jacob, justice for Jacob, and to avenge us, O Father. Send the kinsman avenger, send our kinsman redeemer, to avenge and redeem us. We are in desperate need. We have no hope but you. We have no alua but Yahuwah. We have no Alua but Yahuwah. We have no Alua but Yahuwah. And Yahusha is our master and king. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness to us. We don't deserve it. We know that we don't deserve it, but we're so grateful for it. And we love you and we honor you, Father. We pray that once again, you'll take this water we are mostly water. Our bodies are made up of majority water. We pray that you would take this water that we are. We are bags of water and that you would bring the fire. 
the fire of your Ruach, that you would consume us with a flame of fire, of love for you, and of power, and of soundness of mind, and of scriptural insight, and wisdom, and every gift that you desire to give to us. We pray, Father, that you would pour out your blessings, your barakah upon us, and cause us to walk in your ways, in your statutes, and do the things that are pleasing in your sight. May we once again be filled with your Ruach, O Father. May we once again do the greater works, greater works, casting out demonic elements, healing the sick, raising the dead, doing the things, Father, that our ancestors did in the first century when the Ruach of Yahusha and of the Father came upon them. Let it be again, O Father. Let it be again. Let it be. Make the world to know you. Make them to see your power and your majesty and your splendor. Make them to know and remember Zakar, your power. And may they never forget again. May they never forget. They've forgotten. Make them remember, O Father. I thank thee. I thank you for this day. I thank you that I get to come and speak with you. And that my brother and my brothers and sisters get to join in from wherever they are around the world. Thank you, Father. Redeem Jacob. Justice for Jacob. Justice for Jacob. Judgment on our enemies. That's our prayer. That's our prayer. And we ask you to bring it forth, O Father. For only you can avenge us. Only you. I pray, Father, that you would meet every need. That you would barakah. That you would baruch our brothers and sisters, and you would meet every need, physical, financial, spiritual, that you would grant us wisdom and insight and help us to know the hope of our calling, to know the things that we must do in this hour, to know you and your son. Hallelujah. Thank you for being there, even when you could have turned your back on us completely, but you didn't, because you are Yahuwah, and you are ever merciful. May we always know you as merciful Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for hearing us today. Thank you for hearing us. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me once again on the channel, brothers and sisters. I pray that the Most High would Baruch and keep you. Bless. I pray that he would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That he would lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, peace, peace in your heart and mind, soul and body, peace in every area of your life. Until we all, that's what we're waiting for, brothers and sisters, until we all come to the unity of the faith, until we all come to the full stature of Messiah, where he is fully formed in us, where we're no longer children tossed to and fro by every, every wind of doctrine, but we're standing firm, knowing what we believe and knowing in whom we have believed. And we have been conformed into the image of Messiah. Until we all, that will be a wonderful and beautiful day. Hallelujah. Shalom and shalom, brothers and sisters. Thank you.